Dude is dead. Oh. What's up, guys? Welcome back. My name is Jeff, I'm the owner of RDR Gear here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And if you don't know what we do at RDR, you can find a couple of different ways. Number one, our Facebook, Instagram, and our website, as well as all the content we put on this YouTube channel that helps keep Chris Free employed and fed and gives me something to do on the weekends. So today, I'm with the other half of the Farm Training Center. If you guys didn't know and you're from Utah, the Farm Training Center was under ownership of some different folks for many, many, many years. Taylor and Josh have recently purchased a farm and they're doing different upgrades. These guys are both very like-minded to myself and to you guys. And it's a great new uh, future for the farm. So uh, let the people know what you do, background, yeah. life, all that stuff, et cetera. Cool, yeah, no, I'm actually still in school working to get my degree I'm at uh, Utah Valley University. And uh, just like you, the farm keeps me busy in yeah. my, my spare time. Um, and yeah, we, we want to maintain it and have it be a sanctuary for shooters and people who enjoy the application of those skills. Sure. Um, there's lots of ranges, even for military and law enforcement, that don't allow them to yes. apply the training. We always get cut out. Yep. yep. So that we want it, we want the farm to be a place where they can come and apply low light skills. Sure. Apply drawing from holster, doing shooting on the move. You know, all the the cool technical stuff that that should be practiced. We want to keep it as a range for them to do that. And what's great here at the farm, even though a lot of the LE ranges, not that cops or the LD and military ranges are screw civilians for the skill level, oftentimes it's bureaucratic nonsense that doesn't allow us onto those ranges. Where here, the farm is open to civilians, LE, mill, the works that do a lot of different contract work, classes, training. Um, we just finished an awesome one today. And uh, that's what's cool about this place. It really is a sanctuary for anybody who is into shooting sports, whether you're training professionally, recreationally, sport shooting. We have IDPA, USPSA here. Yep. So it's a pretty cool facility to kind of encompass all shooting sports. So you and I have taken a few classes together um, and we've done some force on force stuff. What do you think as an owner of a facility like this, what are some of the, the intro or the basics or the requirements for force on force? Yeah, I think that's a great question because um, when you sign up for just let's say a pistol fundamentals class, mm -hmm. which a lot of great guys teach that, you're, you're applying, your brain is so wrapped up in focusing how to work that pistol. Grip, sights, trigger press, like that's all of your mm -hmm. bandwidth, all of your brain power is focused on that. So with force on force, you're, you're focusing on fighting another person yes. that can shoot stuff back at you. So I, the first thing that comes to mind is having your, your baseline fundamentals of, of skills um, with rifle and pistol. Not that you need to be perfect and honed yeah, in, agreed. dialed in on those, but have some sort of baseline. Mm -hmm. So that way, um, you know, John, uh, an instructor calls it subconscious competency. Your brain doesn't have to think about it, it just does it. Yep. Just like how we drive cars. We don't have to think about it, we just do it. Um, and so it, I think in, in my opinion, it helps a ton to kind of have that uh, basic level of competency before jumping into a, a force on force class because that way you can focus on all of the knowledge that the instructors are giving you and not worrying about your shooting skills. 100%. Like, like today we did, we did rifle and pistol both, but the one thing I didn't see any issue today with is people having unloaded guns, yeah. right? Or not press checking a pistol or rifle or not having mags loaded ready to go. And even though that's not, say, a fundamental of pistol or rifle, it's the fundamental of knowing your condition of your weapon at all Firearms times, right? Yeah. It's the application of your gear because adjusting your sling correctly to make sure you can move that rifle, um, having your ear protect, eye protection, all that kind of stuff. Um, but since they, I mean, nobody had any real like, oh, click, shit, I forgot to load this thing. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Everybody was very squared away today. Even though it was simunitions, no crazy um, issues like we were watching from the catwalk and the stack. Um, so when you think, for you now, we've done some pretty high speed, not high speed, I should say, but more advanced classes than say what we did earlier today, right? So you guys here now, are there other instructors you're gonna bring back for more force on force stuff in the future? Yeah, definitely. We've got, so Core Vision guys are coming back out. Oh, nice. Um, and it's, they're, they're kind of pry rangers. Um, and we, we've got to meet Christian. Christian yeah. does a fantastic job. I've met TJ, or not met TJ, but I followed TJ when he first, they first started the Core Vision back in the day. So I've got a lot of cool content. Everybody's soft, former soft guys there. So I like the fact, I think to me personally, a segue for you guys who are training, like Drew, Bear Solutions. Mm -hmm. I've had more 
kind of a transferable knowledge taking classes from the soft guys than I have maybe an LE guy, right? There's something with, I guess too, being rangers and, and, and being special operations guys, their job has been to train indigenous personnel in other places, so they're good teachers to start with. But for some reason, every class I've taken, um, I took one with Drew, I've taken one with Mike Lover, now Christian, there's something with that level of transfer of information and contextual knowledge that plays into the explanations, the demos, et cetera, that really does translate well with taking classes from dudes like that. So yeah. it's definitely a benefit. Yeah, so we're, we actually were having Drew come back out and he was actually my, I, that was my first class. Oh, I was it? Took, okay. His rifle and, and pistol class. And what was awesome is like, I, I agree with you. Like he was able to contextualize it and give such an awesome curriculum yeah. to where like, it gave me a fundamental, like a baseline yeah. of how to apply yep. my pistol, my rifle. Um, so yeah, we were having guys like that come out. So if you, you yeah, we're, if you're looking for rifle and pistol fundamentals courses, we're having guys come out to teach that. For we're sure. actually having uh, Dan Brokos come out too. Oh, nice, okay. And he's gonna be running CQB through the shoot house. Um, another former uh, yeah. soft guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, high end up there too. Yeah, oh, we've, uh, Craig Douglas. We're hoping to have him back. Again. Oh, nice, that'd be cool. Very, that his class is super applicable in my opinion to civilian. Well, honestly, anyone. But if you're a civilian that carries regularly, that class is a ten out of ten, yeah. awesome class and super applicable for. Stuff it's that, that combatives yeah. mix of pistol, rifle, or pistol hang or handgun, and then combatives, hand hand. and then having that knife if that is an option for you as well. So it's super yeah. good instructor yes. there. Yeah. So we got lots of good force on force classes teed up, as well as what we do with our alumni is we're we're going to be planning future training days. So as we learn these skills, you know, to keep progressing in them, mm -hmm. we want to we want to schedule practice days so you guys we could come out and apply all the skills that we learned, and then just you know keep progressing, Very cool. keep learning. Very nice. So, Christy has a good question. Should we, as, as you being a dad and a husband, me being a single dude, um, should we practice what we've learned in regards to structure assessment as civilians in our own homes and spaces? I'm kind of, I, I, my opinion in a roundabout, I think it depends on the structures of your home, number one. I live in a condo, so I have a one line of sight to my front door. I have no children other than my dogs. So it's a different application for me. So I think before I would spend a ton of time in the firearms work of CQB, my home, I think if I had a wife and kids, I would have a more of a, a home defense plan per se. But you being a, a husband and dad, maybe you have a different viewpoint on that than I do. Yeah, um, I, it's a, I actually look at it very like, uh, skill like it like the, being able to move through your house or move through a structure you know sh I look at that as like a, a skill based and just like with any skill or any sport um, you can get really good at that but if you don't practice it it, it diminishes For sure. and okay, not like right. immediately but you know little by little um, so being able to do those like five minute um, reps in your house that makes sense okay i feel like it will polish and keep up on those skills and for then, sure i could see that and then like what you were saying yeah having some sort of plan because that's the other thing i've learned with force on force if you don't have a if you don't have a or if you haven't thought about these things prior when that uh situation is presented to you like there's a very uh you know there's a big likelihood that you will freeze and, and not oh, for know sure. what to say or do. Dude, we had a couple this afternoon. I mean, I think when we first started the morning, you know, rolling the door, um, you know, getting that kind of visual of the room, uh, that was a big one because we both kind of stuttered in that one and then working the two-on-one, um, doing the corner fed, figuring out what you'd run, like me, I'm that door this afternoon, mm -hmm. <laughs> grab the door the wrong direction. Um, those are things that we learn, but also I think like you make a valid point because if I think about what Chris's question was and you're talking about working at home, what if you are maybe, maybe something happened to Mall Act if you're in a mall and you got stuck somewhere and now you're going to leave this building get out of that structure. Like, that's a valid, that's what really made me just think about this now, like having those, those skills to assess a T intersection or a long hallway with somebody, you know, or someone, maybe another concealed carrier or your family, whatever. That is, you know, maybe using the home when the wife and the kids are out that night, whatever, yep. you're working a few things or Doing if the you're- the same at, stuff that yeah, we did. for yeah. sure. Yeah, or maybe at the office one night, like I could use the shop, you know, there's a lot, long hallway and a bunch of offset rooms. That's a good point. Maybe, it, yeah. So that's a good question, Chris. That makes me think a lot of, you know, reassessing the fact of if you don't, and you make a good point, if you don't use those, you may not yeah. be able to- recall them if you did have to use them right yeah, it's like a sport so. you know like i i sorry i after taking drew's class I, I look at shooting very much as like a 
a sure. sport almost. And um, whether it's basketball, baseball, football, whatever it is, if you're not if you're not consistently applying that that sport, um, your skills will will go away. And then when you're you're like you go to compete against someone, and you know, let's say you know in tennis, mm-hmm. and you haven't been practicing, yeah, like you could maybe hold your own, but For if sure. that guy's been practicing, you're probably gonna get worked, you know. Chris, you was like all state for a tennis player. Were you Christian? That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, real quick too at home. Man, we just talked about CQB in your house. Be smart, dudes. Don't run around with the, the, the home defense gun that you have stashed, loaded. Be smart. Just a segue. I know it's social media and it's 2022, but just be aware of what you're doing. If you don't have a cert pistol, uh, pull a slide off your frame, whatever case may be, just be safe when you're doing it. So, you know, it's funny because we laughed about it today, but, you know, they always say two is one, one is none, right? That hit me in the face today because what did I bring? I brought a piston rifle trying to put a, a UTM bolt in it, right? But yeah. thank God I brought the old faithful A2, right, today. Yeah, so yeah. for me, uh, that two is one, one is none. Coming to a class and having backups of your gear saved my ass big time today because if I did not bring that second rifle just for the hell of it, it would have, I would have been done. I didn't have, I wouldn't have had a rifle for the day. So that was something for me. What about you? Uh, just gear application. Like, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, okay, yeah. I love being able to apply you know us as gun guys we can get super into gear yep well hey we now get to apply it and see how it works in yeah. force on force situations yep. so yeah that would be that's my oh. only thing guys it was a great day today thank you for having me out dude yeah thank i appreciate you, it dude that it was, was awesome, awesome as always guys as always we post two videos every week on gear that we use places we train here at the farm till next time be well take care